Hi, I'm Richard Armitage, and I'm narrating David Copperfield by Charles Dickens for Audible. Really, I feel like Copperfield is, is autobiographical for Dickens. It, you really feel like the writer is inside that boy. He speaks to the audience as a first person, really. He it, it's very personal, and he, he uses I, and he, it's very intimate. And I just thought that was a real opportunity to talk to somebody as if it was just a one, one person. In consideration of the day and hour of my birth, it was declared by the nurse and by some sage women in the neighbourhood who had taken a lively interest in me several months before there was any possibility of our becoming personally acquainted, first, that I was destined to be unlucky in life, and secondly, that I was privileged to see ghosts and spirits. Both these gifts, inevitably attaching as they believed to all unlucky infants of either gender, born towards the small hours on a Friday night. His observations of love, his observations of ageing, his observation of loss, the self-reflection, I think, is are the things that really come out through this book. And at the same time, there's immense humour. That's something that's, that's so unique to Dickens, that is that he'll create a really despicable character and then make them make you kind of laugh at them. The things that really trip you up, though, are those extraordinarily long sentences that Dickens uses. If you try to do them in one breath, you'd, you'd need a pair of lungs the size of, of this room. Um, and often get to the end of the line and go, I have no idea what I've just said. I feel like Wilkins Micawber is exactly the same. He gets to the end of his sentence and he's like, anybody? Anybody know what I just said? I see Dickens writing, because I assume everybody does when he describes it to you, is you see it, and then really you just create a voice around the person that you see. With this, number 28 retired, after a glance between him and Uriah, as if they were not altogether unknown to each other, through some medium of communication, and a murmur went round the group, as his door shut upon him, that he was a most respectable man, and a beautiful case. What I hope is that it's, it doesn't feel like a, a sort of stuffy Victorian novel, that somehow it feels like a diary uh, and an account of a life. It's highly amusing, highly entertaining, and, and very philosophical about love, life, and death.